Hey guys, it's Molly with chickens.org and today we're going to be talking about how to ferment your chicken food. So why would we want to ferment our feed? Well, first off, just like in humans, it increases the probiotics in the chicken's digestive system, which helps them digest their food and helps them be healthier overall. It's increasing all the nutrients that the chicken can absorb. It's strengthening their immune system. Some studies say that it helps them lay more eggs. I don't know the science behind that, uh, but a healthy chicken is going to produce more eggs than an unhealthy chicken. So this is just an easier way to get there. It also expands the food because we're going to be putting it in a bucket of water, basically. Fermented food is also easier for chickens to digest, mainly because it increases those probiotics, but also it's softer, so they don't have to work as hard to break it up. And most importantly, they love it. It may take a little bit of time for your flock to get used to the idea of fermented feed since it's wet and not used, they're maybe used to dry food. But in the long run, it's gonna be a really good choice. So it's super simple. All you need is an empty, clean bucket. I cleaned mine out with just soap and water. This is an old uh, drywall bucket, but if you wanna just go buy one from the store, that's great. We're all for reusing at chickens.org, so we've been repurposing things. Um, you're gonna need some sort of scooper. I usually just use a mason jar to feed my chickens, so it's good because you can mark out measurements on it, see how much you want to feed them, or just how many scoops. Um, you're gonna need water, which I have a hose right here, and you're gonna need some sort of stir stick. This is just a shovel I found around my backyard, but you can use a paint stir stick, you can use a ladle, you could use whatever clean thing you can think of. And lastly, you're going to need some sort of lid. Uh, you can use either the lid that came with your bucket, or you could use uh, cut up an old feed bag and place that over with a rubber band. Something that's going to fit loosely so that you can have some oxygen exchange within your bucket. And most importantly, you're going to need food. So I have some layer uh, crumble here. That's just what my girls eat. We don't do pellets as much. This works with grains, this works with pellets, anything that they can eat that you can soak in water, any of their sort of scratch type food. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is fill your bucket with food. And it's suggested that you wanna do this between a quarter of the bucket and a half of the bucket. But it's since the food expands when you put the water over it, you don't wanna really fill it more than half or you're gonna, it won't work as well. You'll either overfill your bucket or have too much food and not enough oxygen getting to the bottom. It'll be a mess. So just don't fill it more than halfway full with food. All right, so here you can see there's kind of a fill line here. This is where I filled my food to. It's about a quarter full. So now we're gonna fill the bucket with water. And you wanna go about two inches over the level of your food first. Now my bucket is full of water and it's kind of cool. You can already see it's starting to bubble, which means there's already some sort of chemical process taking place. So next, you're just gonna take your stir stick and just stir all your food. Make sure every part of it gets wet. If you have to add more water after this, that's great. But again, your goal for the first day is that you want the feed to be, or the water level to be about two inches above the food level. And it's gonna stay like this for the first 24 hours. You wanna kinda of check on it a couple times and make sure that you have enough water in there. You don't want it to get dry. Then after 24 hours, you want it to, you want your water level to be about an inch over the food. And this is only because that first 24 hours, you're gonna be absorbing more water than you will after that because it'll reach a saturation point. So you can already see how much fuller my bucket is with the water in it. It's heavy. <laughs> um, just, I don't remember I only had about that much feed in there and now it's almost like probably three quarters of the weight full. So just expect to use a lot of water in your bucket. So then once you have your water in, go ahead and loosely cover your bucket. Just, I wouldn't press this down all the way. I'm just gonna set it on top so that no dirt gets in. And just remember it's super important, just like if you were making pickles or any other pickling, because that's a fermentation process as well, that you don't want any of your food to be above the water level because it'll start to mold then. 
Um, and then you probably don't want to feed that to your chickens. If there's a white film, kind of scoop it out. Uh, just It's probably a harmless mold, but you don't want to risk it. So just scoop it out, throw it in your compost, and uh, have, only give your chickens the good stuff. So now we're going to let this sit for a couple days. So fermenting your feed is going to take somewhere between two and four days. Uh, just because you want to make sure that you get enough bacteria going in there. My girls like to just eat watered down crumble, but if you want to ferment it, you need to let it sit for a couple days. So here we are, and it's been about a week, so you can just see the progress. Here is our fermented feed, and I just took the lid off. I'm about to stir it. That's totally good. Right up to the top like that. You should see some bubbles in it. That just means that chemical processes are happening and everything is good.